Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Armo 65 Plus Micro Brush Quadcopter from Makerfire. In this video I'm going to go through its features, show you how to set it up and of course take it for a test flight. So let's start by opening the box and see everything we're getting inside. So inside this pretty compact box we're getting the quadcopter. This is a bind and fly quadcopter which is available only in one version. We're getting it with an XM receiver which is compatible with FRSky transmitters. In addition, we're getting one battery. This is a 260 mAh 1S HV LiPo battery. And on the bottom of the box, we're getting all the accessories. We're getting five pairs of very colorful propellers. They chose to include lots of propellers, so you're not going to need to buy spare ones. In addition, we're getting this simple USB charger, the instructions manual, a propeller extractor tool, and the instructions manual for the FX Sky XM receiver. Now, by the way, there's also a pro version, which includes the same quadcopter, but it comes with three batteries instead of one. And you're also getting a multiple output charger instead of the simple one. So if you don't have a multiple output charger, you should consider the pro version because I think it's going to provide you with a little bit more value for money. So now let's have a look on the quadcopter itself. On the top, we can find this 31 millimeters propellers, which are firmly attached to 716, 17,600 kV brushed motors. On the front, we can find an 800 TV line CMOS camera, which is fixed, so you can't adjust its angle. On the bottom of the quadcopter, we can find the FR Sky XM receiver and an SP Racing F3 brushed flight controller, which has a built in 25 milliwatt VTX and unfortunately doesn't feature Betaflight OSD. The battery connector is a 2 mm GST connector, so make sure that if you buy additional batteries, to buy compatible ones. The built in VTX supports 16 channels and in order to set it up you will need to use this button on top of the flight controller the bottom one is the boot button so you need to use the one on top in order to set up your favorite band and channel just go to the instructions manual and you will need to use this frequency table and then you have to match two colors so let's power on the quadcopter and you can see that this led indicator flashes in two colors so the first color is white and then blue and you can see that now it's set on 5860. So first white and then blue. Forgive me if this is not blue because I'm colorblind. So it's a little bit hard for me to tell. And if I'm going to press this button again, you can see that now it flashes in white and white. And now we are on 5945. So all you need to do is to cycle between all these channels to match your favorite one. It's not very convenient to set it for the first time, but after that, you probably won't need to change it again. So it's not that bad. Binding the FRSky XM receiver is done by holding the bind button while powering on the quadcopter by either the battery or the micro USB connector from your computer. Then you will have to set your Tyrannis on mode D16, channel range 1 to 16, and then hit the bind button. You're not going to get any RSSI feedback on your remote controller, but it should support RSSI on one of the auxiliary channels. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me on this particular receiver, so I might need to flash it with different firmware in order to make it work, but I'm not going to do it in this video. Now let's weigh up the quadcopter. The weight without the battery is 26.4 grams, and after adding the included 1S battery, the weight is 33.1 grams. The next thing I'm going to do is to go for beta flight configuration and then take it for a test flight and I'll see you in the end of this video in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I think that the Armor 65 Plus performed really well. The build quality is good. I crashed it a few times and you can see that the frame is still intact. And in addition, the camera performed great. And I could see really clearly both when flying the quadcopter indoors and outdoors. In terms of performance, this quadcopter is not much of an aqua flyer. Of course, it can still do flips and rolls, but it's more intent to be flown calmly indoors and also outdoors in a very calm day. Now, by the way, even though I said in the beginning of the video, this, this quadcopter comes only with an FR Sky receiver, it's also possible to get it with a DSM-2 or a FlySky receiver. So when you order it, just leave a note and make your file going to include the receiver of your choice. Currently, this quadcopter is on sale for $70, which is not really cheap, but considering the build quality and the performance of this quadcopter is not bad, and it costs almost the same price as the FR Sky MQ-70, which I've already reviewed, and I think that this quadcopter is much better in every aspect. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.